Welcome back to The Fix. This is, of course, where we interrogate the big um, role players and ask them what the big issues are. Uh, we look at uh, the um, issues that affect you. We tell you why you should care, how it affects you, and, of course, why it matters. As usual, I'm joined in the studio with my sparring partner, Sunday Times and Business Day columnist, Peter Bruce. Peter, hi. Yeah. How hi. are you? Yeah, another, another busy week in paradise. Eh? Absolutely. I mean, was, um, what do you make of the, of the Gwen and Gwenya resignation? Yeah, well, I mean, I was it inevitable? Well, I think it was inevitable, and I'm afraid I'm, you know, I'm on her side in this. I think that uh, she was treated extreme, extremely extre it's extremely badly by, by her party. I wrote my column about it in the Sunday yes. Times this morning. I think uh, the point that I wanted to pick up with yeah. you, though, is in the column you speak about the fact that, um, you know, she was always on her own. She didn't necessarily have Musi's background, but also yeah. she comes from a different ideological school of thought, isn't it? Well, they all knew that. She's basically, she, she comes from, she, she's a liberal, right? So she's in the classical sense, like a lot of the party's MPs are, uh, and not a social democratic like the other lot of the, the party's MPs are. She, she, she asked for and was given a mandate at a meeting of the federal executive or federal council. The DA, by the way, is, is more complicated than any <laughs> other political uh, party. She was given a mandate to go, and, to go and put together an empowerment policy that didn't make reference to race. Not a difficult job, I wouldn't thought, and, and quite an interesting intellectual proposition. And there are lots of ways to enrich and, uh, and people and bring them out of poverty without necessarily targeting them because they happen to be a certain race. We'd have a, a more democratic economy would do the, the job if we could yeah. get it working. Um, anyway, she arrives at this big meeting in October when she has now been telling people that she'll be ready with her document and she's treated like a little girl by, you know, by the sort of the men who run the party. But I must say, um, Paul, I, I must say, Peter, mm -hmm. I've interviewed her twice. Yeah. And I found her weak, yeah. I found her unconvincing, and I found her out of touch with the majority of the people in the DA. Well, but I mean, I don't, I don't know who the majority of the people in the DA are. I mean, I know more or less who the MPs are. Um, and she was not out of touch with a large, a large lot of them, the liberals, basically. Yeah. Whether she was out of touch with the people who think that, you know... She's out of touch with the mass base that the well, DA is trying to build in the township. No, that may well be so. That may well be so. But th what was interesting about what happened to her was that the DA simply didn't want to discuss it. Mm. I mean, it wasn't as if they were going to say, um, uh, um, you know, they, they weren't going to walk away from, from uh, an economic policy that they may have now into something completely different. Yes. But what they didn't want to do was have the discussion. They're yes. scared of ideas, these people. And part of the reason is what happens is, is, that, is that you have a thing called the CEO in the DA. Uh, Paul Bowie. Nobody yes. knows him. If he fell into the studio now, nobody <laughs> would know who he was. Um, I know Paul he's Bowie. He's incredibly powerful. He's a very powerful guy. And he says yay or nay to these things, you know, and it is him and James Self. I think um, um, uh, um, Athol Trollope is also important in that, in that grouping, and of course Musi Mamani. And they, t they take all decisions. Musi doesn't leave the party in the conventional sense of the word. It's, co it's, it's a very tight collective. Mm. of those guys yeah. and she she just said that she didn't have a chance yeah and i see helen has come out in her defense of course well of course i hope i would hope she would you know i mean mm -hmm. this party's been going downhill ever since helen zilla stepped stepped by you know why she stepped down because the, the guys around her the white guys the ethel trollops of the world and and i'm sure james self as well they wouldn't yes so she said well i'll do it yeah. Um, well, I, I think the problem for me, Peter, is that Musi is simply not in charge of the DA. That's very clear. James Self and Paul Bowie runs the DA. That's a fact. Yeah. And I think that that is the root of a lot yeah. of the issues. And but of course, other things were also happening this week. We yeah. saw the former president, Zuma's son, uh, having his corruption charges provisionally withdrawn. What do you yeah. make of that? Well, you know, I keep, so this is, uh, and you know, I'm a bit of a skeptic about the scale of the fight back, right? Yeah. So there's a fight back, I, I, I get it, about, um, against Ramaphosa, okay? The Zuma faction, such as it is, um, uh, is fighting back. And, and there are still people inside every institution yes. that are loyal to Zuma. So what happens is that the, the two weeks or ten days before the new NPA chief arrives, somebody loyal to Zuma, I presume, uh, decides inside the NPA to temporarily or to, or to withdraw the charges of uh, corruption against Dutazani. 
and I presume that that is a kind of you know a a what do you call it you know sort of a hatchet in the ground to the yes. new uh, uh, NPA head who comes in on the first of February to say well you can pick it up and you can try and plant it and the design is back again. Absolutely, but what I think is really important, Peter, is to not look at the designies, um, um, the dropping of the charges outside of what the NPA did do, particularly the NPA in KwaZulu-Natal, where Mwepone Noko, yeah. who is a very close associate of yeah. President Zuma, but yeah. also of Mkobo Jiba, yeah. as well as Lawrence Mruebe. Yeah. And she, of course, had the um, uh, Sanko president That's arrested. Right. Yeah. Um, and also Mike Mabuyakulu. Yeah. Um, so the fight back isn't just a fight back. Um, they are actually in positions. I mean, Shamila Batoy is going to come into a position with two compromised uh, um, uh, deputies, deputies yeah. and a very corrupt. Not in the office, at least. Exactly, yeah. and a very, very corrupt yeah. um, head of the NPA yeah. in yeah. KwaZulu Natal, who should, quite frankly, in my opinion, not be in her job. Well, I mean, but, but she can presumably be removed from her job or yes. given another job. I exactly. Mean, you know, this is a, the, the point I would I would have thought about. You know, there's got to be a fight back against the fight back. And if you, if, if, if it's only the Zuma, Zuma camp doing the fighting back, then we're in big trouble. But I suspect that there's an enormous amount of pushing back that that goes on that we don't that we don't hear about it. You know, the story about Jacob Zuma singing a song or recording an album turns out to be complete nonsense. I mean, no, nobody nobody's paying for it. And the studios that he was supposed to do were supposed to be given to him by uh, Black, Ladysmith Black Mombasa. And they don't know anything about it. It takes a couple of weeks for all that to, to come out. Yes. And, he, and he makes a bit of headway, I suppose, mm. in, in uh, public opinion. But, but there's a lot of nonsense floating around, too. And, I, you know, wait until the new head of the NPA asks Linus Breitenbach to be her deputy. Well, I asked um, Glynis yeah, if yeah. she's prepared to actually leave yeah. uh, and go and join the NPA, yeah. and she said yes, of she's prepared. She is, you know? And I think and be, with, be with like planting a Molotov cocktail in the middle of that place. Absolutely, but, a nice bunch but, of but, but, I, but I don't think that it's going to be easy. I think you saw, yeah. see, for example, in crime intelligence, yeah. there's already a fight back against yeah. the new head of crime yeah, intelligence. Absolutely. And I think the sooner the criminal justice system is sorted, uh, the better. If you look at, for example, the SIU reports that have yeah. been compiled that the NPA is actually just sitting on, literally sitting on. I mean, get, that is coming out in the commission. Between election, I guarantee you, we're going to have a couple of high-profile arrests. And well, we change, better. It'll change the mood of the country and it'll certainly change the game that's yeah. being played here now. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at the extent to which uh, someone like Gavin Watson yeah. is allegedly able to speak I mean, and dictate to the president what yeah. to do, you don't even need to get to Ajay Gupta. I mean, you listen to the <laughs> tape. I mean, the absolute contempt <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, with which he speaks. Yeah. You know, and if you think that this has been happening now to Jacob Zuma since, okay, so there was, you know, there were the French arms manufacturer, then there, was, then there were the Watsons, and then there were the Guptas. Um, you, uh, I'm sorry, but I mean, uh, South Africans. He listens to whoever pays him. South Africans aren't fools, and they're not going to fall, I don't think, um, for this fight back thing that this yeah. camp is doing. I think for he me. Is being, he is being exposed for what he is an extremely weak and greedy man. But I think also what is important is that the law enforcement agency shouldn't be allowed to say that they can't work and do parallel investigations because the commission is not resolved. Yeah. The one is not to flip out no, well, for the other. Yeah. yeah, but that is the argument that is beginning to be forwarded, you know, and I think that is what we need to look at. Well, uh, the, uh, a new NPA would just, would just, cut, would just mm -hmm. cut through that. Absolutely. Actually. And then, of course, the other big news is Team South Africa was in Dallas yeah. and uh, put up, you know, uh, quite a big um, yeah, show. They, they worked hard again, huh? They, they worked very hard. Yeah. Um, and, of course, the president coming out very clearly and saying to his senior leaders, stop uh, contradicting each other on monetary policy yeah. and making this debate uh, that we're having, yeah. uh, you know, a non-issue and focus on, on, on the issues. Is this, is this egos that he has to just manage? No, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's probably more than that. I mean, there's a great, we, and we had it when, with, when, when Duma Kubula was, hap, you know, helpfully explaining yeah. to people that the independence of the bank and its mandate and its ownership yes. are three different things. Absolutely. And, and so 
when somebody says we're going to nationalize the bank, that's a stupid thing to say because yeah. it, may, it, is, it sounds sort of anti-market. Yeah. But uh, they're not saying we're going to take away its independence. Absolutely. Uh, and I think they, he yeah. explained it absolutely yeah. well. He said most banks, most central banks yeah. are actually nationalized, yeah. but they're independent and they do their work. But I have to say, I thought that, that Cyril was, was once again, he didn't look like somebody who's on his knees, you know. Yes. But, I mean, he was, he was basically saying, listen, we've had a terrible 10 years. The corruption has taken hold in our country. We're trying to clean it up. It's not, I mean, he wasn't being sweet about Jacob Zuma, the, the Zuma years. Yeah. He, was being quite, he was emphatic about it, and I thought that he did quite well. And I think, I think it was interesting that he ended this trip by going to India. Yes, and being, absolutely. And being fated on quite a grand scale, yes. actually. And, and in I fact, the newspaper is reporting yeah. that India is quite interested in Danal. Uh, yeah. And of course, we know that there was a question around the Saudi India's issue. India's a big weapons um, um, Exactly. Market, um, so that would be an interesting yeah. thing and something to watch. Yeah, and he would have had, you know, he was in Gupta territory. So he would have had a word with the Prime Minister Modi and told him what some of his citizens had done in our country. Absolutely. Well, do stay tuned. After the break, we unpack the implications of the new law governing party political funding signed recently by President Cyril Ramaphosa.